Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Jay Dreamers, and today we're doing a video about the strange sounds heard in the sky. But before I share with you what I believe that they are based on my recent research and studies and findings, um, let's watch this short video that I made off to the right over here. And this is going to help to sort of build a bridge from our old way of thinking, uh, our old mode of thought to a new way of thinking. So let's check this out first. You hear that crack all the way across. Okay, so that was the short video I wanted to share with you all. Let's jump over to my live scene. And I want to talk to you guys about this. The first thing I want to ask uh, everyone in the chat, or you can leave a comment. Have you ever heard these strange sounds coming from the sky? Now, the reason I want to do this video is because th there's videos all over the internet of this p happening. And, you know, the, the videos are pretty much like, wow, check this out, strange sound, etc. But my question for you all is, have you personally heard these sounds coming from the sky or any strange sounds at all? Um, they don't always have to sound like those sounds did, but I'm interested to know, and I bet a lot of other people are as well, have you ever heard these sounds? And I'll share with you guys my own experience because I have heard these sounds. I've heard various strange sounds. One example st sticks out in my mind in particular. Okay, so let's get right to it. Make sure to let me know in the comments and in the chat, 
you know, what your experience was. What did it sound like? You know, how loud was it? You know, where did it seem to be coming from? Stuff like that will be really helpful for those who watch this video in the future. Okay, so first and foremost, why do I have a T-Rex on the screen and Godzilla, right? Well, if you listen closely, that's these these strange sky sounds, they almost sound at times, you know, they can they can they can sound very different. They can have all, all sorts of sounds. But the main one is sort of this real long, loud uh, trumpet blast kind of sound. Um, and when I say trumpet, by the way, for those of you um, who are familiar with the musical instrument trumpet, I'm more talking about the old style of a trumpet, the trumpet that uh, they used to blow that came from the horn of an animal. It, it, it wasn't so pretty sounding. As a matter of fact, it sounds a lot like the Tyrannosaurus Rex and Godzilla, who both represent the titanic giant race, okay? Um, you know, I, I know that, you know, the way they're portrayed to us, that they're these sort of fictional animals or characters or whatnot, and they're totally not real, but there is an element of reality in everything that is labeled fictional or fantasy or any of that. And for those who have the eyes to see, we can see right through the cartoon images that are presented to us and we can see the truth of it. We can see the reality of it. And the reality is that there's a specific reason why the T-Rex and Godzilla both sound exactly like uh, these strange sky sounds. It's this long, you know what I mean? And sometimes it's got knocking. It's it. Uh, people hear it in, in various ways, but either way, it's kind of a scary sound, you know? And the question that I have for all of you watching now, why do you suppose Hollywood would take that sound and associate it with the types of movies that you see with Godzilla and you see with the Tyrannosaurus Rex? What's happening in those movies? And how? what would we relate by watching those movies, if we heard that exact same sound, sometimes it's not, you know, it's, it's other types of gigantic animals or gigantic creatures, uh, that they will also give the same exact strange sky sounds to, for example, trolls, you know, um, in, uh, the, the movie troll hunter, I believe they had this real deep shrieking sound to the trolls and whatnot. But anyhow, basically it is a hearkening. It is a calling. It is an alert and it's letting you know this is the time when one, there's going to be cataclysm. Okay. There's going to be, both of these movies are all, all about basically the end of the world, like a cataclysm, a cyclical cataclysm. Um, so that's, that's kind of what it's letting you know. And two, the return of giant beings. Okay. So when you hear these sounds, you associate them with giant beings that once existed, that still exist. Um, but we have all but forgotten about the giant beings that once lived here as well. So, that's that that's something that I found that was really interesting just about how the sound comes across and what it's related to in the media, right? Now, let's talk about um what exactly the sound is. Okay? As I showed you in the video, that is the exact same sound. So I was wondering this and I'm doing my studying and I I thought about this because I believe well, I know that around our world, whatever your cosmology, around our world, it is agreed upon that there is a plasma dome above us. Huge tubes of plasma that just go right across or around our world. That plasma has the ability to create water. And whenever it creates the water, because it's very cold up there, that water instantly freezes, which means we have a roof or a ceiling, that highest, hardest glass ceiling, as it's said in the media, right? Um, above our heads, it's the dome above our world. And that's, that's, that's where I'm coming from. You don't have to have the same uh, perspective or cosmology as I do in order to appreciate the information that I'm going to be sharing. But that's the, that's the perspective that I'm coming from today at the very least, right? So anyhow, we have a huge glass ceiling or specifically an ice ceiling above our heads. And, um, this is the ice dome, you know, that I, I will be referring to and have referred to in many of my videos. And what happens is that ice dome is protecting us from the plasma that is just outside of it. Okay. And, uh, the plasma, like I said, is gigantic and it, it has the ability basically, well, let me step back. What happens is the ice dome above us Let's start at the beginning. 
It's not there. Okay, all we have is our world, right? In the beginning, we just have our world, and the plasma is able to come down. Well, the electromagnetism is turned on in our world, and the uh, the plasma goes up and around. It's actually following a confinement dome, uh, electromagnetic confinement dome above our world. The plasma follows that electromagnetic dome because it's repelled by the uh, the magnetism, and right where it is it follows that dome perfectly, just like in the Disney, you know, the Disney intro, they show the dome above the castle and stuff. Um, right where that plasma is, right at the electromagnetic dome that is above us and protecting us, that plasma creates water. Then that water freezes instantly and you have the roof over our world protecting us now from the plasma. The plasma becomes cut off and it cannot enter into our world because it is, um, it can't go through matter. The light from the plasma can go through, but the plasma itself cannot go through. And so the dome above us is, in effect, uh, in essence, protecting us from the plasma, uh, which is the plasma has been seen as many different things. OK, but, uh, you know, for more information on the plasma, just check out uh, any of my plasma catastrophe videos. Anyhow, so that is the ice dome above us. OK, and what we're going to start seeing um, Actually, I'm going to come back to the moon in a minute. I want to save the moon. I need, I need to talk about a couple of other things. Let's talk about how it sounds, okay? Because we're really talking about the sound. The strange sounds in the sky. How is it described by people? It's described as all kinds of things. And I, I highly recommend, if you're interested in the topic, doing a search on YouTube or Google and listening to these sounds for yourself. I do want to throw out there, yes, it's possible that some people may have faked videos and put them up and taken sounds from somewhere else, but it is, uh, while it's not impossible, it's improbable that so many people around the world have all just decided to get onto this hoax of the sky sounds. But that's why I ask all of you, have you heard the sounds? Be a witness in this video and, you know, let people know if you have actually heard these sounds and what did it sound like? Now, I have heard the sounds, okay? The sounds I have heard from the various videos, it sounds like, you know, it, it could possibly be like far away construction that's just echoing really loud. Sometimes it's just a huge bang out of nowhere or multiple bangs. Sometimes it's a very eerie, high-pitched sound. Sometimes it's more like a train, like a freight train. Uh, actually, there are videos out there where people have heard these sounds during a storm, and they have called the local weather station here in, here in America um, to ask, like, where's the tornado? And the, the weather station, I'll, I'll have to share this with you guys sometime because it's on the internet. The weather stations let people know they had to put it out there and say, We've, we've received multiple uh, calls about the sound in the sky. There is no tornado. So please stop calling us, basically. Everyone has been hearing these sounds in the sky. So this is something that I will be taking very seriously. Um, but first, let me tell you about my experience, okay? I've had many experiences. I hear things all of the time outside. Um, typically at night, I'll hear just real subtle booms and they just subtly shake my house. They shake my chest like when you're standing next to a base. But there was this one time, uh, it was about, I don't know, maybe three months ago, two, 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 three months ago. And I was in my bedroom with my son and we're playing video games. Our dog is in there. It's pretty loud in the room because I had the, the volume turned up. Um, the window outside was open. Now, I'm playing this game and for about five minutes, I started to hear this sound that was coming from outside. And at first I thought it was like the garbage truck or, you know, something that's happening a block or two away, but the sound got louder and louder and louder to the point where it sounded like that, uh, that freight train sound. And no, it wasn't a freight train. There are no freight trains around me. Um, to the point where my heart started to beat pretty hard in my chest and I put the video game down and I went to the window and I'm looking out everywhere. I'm looking to see if there are other people out there because I expected like everyone to come out of their houses to look around and find out what this is. And um, I went around to all the different windows. I looked outside and it was so loud. The point at which I had went out to look for it, it started to, you know, sort of dissipate and die down. But it was that loud. It was so loud that it came in through my through my house and drowned out, you know, the television and everything to where I, I got on patrol and I was looking around to make sure we were all going to be all right. So that was ex that was my experience. Um, the, other, the thing is, and I believe a lot of people are going to be able to relate with this. 
you can't tell, I can't tell where this sound is coming from. You just can't tell. You don't know if you can't pinpoint it. You can't say, oh, it's over that way. You know, like an airplane, when an airplane, you know, flies past and it's really loud, typically the plane will be here and then the sound will drag, you know, behind it. So you have, wherever you hear the sound, you have to kind of look forward from where you think the sound is. And that's where the air, you know, that's where the airplane is. My point is you can pinpoint that sound, at least the general location. These strange sky sounds we can't pinpoint. We don't know where it's coming from. All the videos of people on the internet, they, they get out their cell phones, they get out everything and they're going outside and they're showing, they're looking around because they think they're going to see something up in the sky. That is the location. It's in the sky. It's coming from above us, right? That's where it's coming from. It's not echoing off the ground. It's not doing any stuff. It's coming from the sky. That's the one thing we know. Now, um, like I said, the sound, I believe, is actually coming from the sound of ice. Um, the the uh, second recording that you heard, first the first recording on the video, that was an actual video, unedited, of somebody who had posted um, their video. You know, and it's really interesting because the sky in that video is all red, which is uh, typically associated with plasmic activity in the atmosphere. But anyhow. And the, and the various gases and how the plasma is interacting with those gases. But after that video came the next one where I showed you the glacier. That was a recording of a glacier. Now, I did slow it down by 50%. I slowed the sound down. Um, actually, on a couple of those, I slowed the sound down by about 50%. And my reasoning is because those are all small examples of the greater thing that is happening above our heads because it's so much bigger in size it's going to sound different it's going to be longer tones it's going to last longer it's going to be more drawn out um that just so you so that you all know this phenomena is a known phenomena about the ice making these sounds and it's not just the glaciers the glaciers have the best ones i've found they sound more like that long T-Rex, Godzilla, roaring trumpet sound, right? That's what the glaciers sound like when they're melting, by the way. So that's really where I'm going with this video. Um, some of the other things are on brittle ice or thin ice. Do a quick Google search. I didn't want to share the videos because, you know, I just wanted to make sure I talk about it and not, you know, uh, share other people's stuff. But if you do a quick Google search of uh, strange ice sounds, uh, National Geographic even did, uh, a, a show about this. You've got like people who live by lakes. And by the way, tell me if you've heard this as well, when the lake freezes or when a pond freezes, if it's big enough, you know, as it starts to melt and the ice gets thinner and thinner and it starts to sort of crack here and there, you'll hear those, what that star Wars pew, 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 you know, you'll hear that. And that is also, I believe happening above us. Um, because this is one of the signs of the end of the, the renewal, I should say, I don't like to call it the end. It's not the end. Um, but this is one of the signs of the cyclic, uh, cataclysm that befalls our world from time to time. The sign is, has been described as many different things. The most commonly description is the trumpets or the trumpets of God or the tr the archangel trumpets, etc. because that's what people know. They have heard it. It's been imprinted on us for so long. We hear the trumpets. We know that the sky will fall and that the, you know, the monsters and the, all the, all the different ways that it's told, all the different ways it's painted, um, that all starts to happen. This is one of those signs in my opinion. So, um, I'm sharing this with those of you who might have a similar opinion. Um, so, oh yeah, by the way, the phenomena, the phenomena is called acoustic dispersion. Okay. So when you have the ice and the ice is becoming thin and it's starting to melt or it's starting to crack, it will start to make sounds and it will be dispersed throughout the ice. And that's why it makes such a, a long drawn out reverberating kind of a sound. So it's called acoustic dispersion. Now, the sounds are always coming from the sky. We don't know where, just up there somewhere. The same thing happens whenever people experience acoustic dispersion out on a lake or out on a pond that's been frozen, thinly frozen, okay? Not solid frozen, but thinly frozen, which means it is breaking off, it's melting, all right? Um, if you've ever heard that, then you know 
The sound is coming from the ground. The sound is coming from the ice. It's coming from down there. You know that. But you can't pinpoint it on the ice as well. You don't know where it's coming from. It's just kind of coming from out there somewhere, you know? So that's two things that it already has in common. We know where it's coming from, but we can't pinpoint its location. We know where the sound from the ice is coming from, but we can't pinpoint its location. Uh, let's see. What else was there? Oh, let's go back to the moon. Okay, so I want to share some stuff about the moon. Let me go ahead and bring up some images here. Now, this is a two-part video. And for those of you who have been watching, this is a little bonus. I believe and I predict, you know, I'm not. I'm probably not the first person to predict it, but I believe that the moon is going to break. I've, I've, I kind of wanted it to break anyways. I've shared that with, you know, on prior videos. I just, I don't know, like the moon, I don't know. It's nice and everything, but I, I don't know. I always thought like it's going to break. Now, let me go ahead and pull up some uh, images here to go along with this next part. There it is. Boom. Okay, so our ceiling is the ice dome or the ice roof of our world when ours breaks when the sky falls because it literally will fall chicken little was right i'm proud to say um when the sky falls we will potentially be able to see the other worlds with their domes as well. And those domes, like, I mean, we can already see the moon. And let me just cut to the chase. The moon is the dome of another world. It's, I believe it's the dome to our sister world, the world that's right across from Mars. Um, and that's why we see the moon breaking in the movies so often. Like I'm showing these pictures right here. When our dome breaks, when our glass ceiling, our our ice dome, ice wall, whatever you want to call it, when that breaks, then I believe the other ones will also break because this is going to be happening to many worlds all at the same time. When that happens, the one that we can see constantly, which is the moon, we will watch as it breaks apart, as it falls apart. But remember, it's not a moon, okay? Now, this is my perspective, okay? So I'm just talking from my my own my own experience my own walk in life but that's no moon kid you know to quote star wars that's no moon that is not a moon it's not a rock that's spinning around etc that's a solid fixed structure now i'll get into like how the moon and how the sun all seem to move in the sky another time but um yeah that that's the dome that's the roof to another place that's why you only see one side of it all the time because it only has it has two sides it's got the outside and it's got the inside all right but it doesn't it's not like you can see all the way around it that's a dome of the other place that is the safety protector of that world from the plasma um, that they experience actually you know what I want to point out some of these pictures as well um, but anyhow yeah that's, that's my point when this happens, the moon will not give its light because the moon's going to crumble and go away. So those of you who have read the Bible and various other religious texts where it talks about how the moon will stop giving its light, well, that's because there won't be a moon for, for a little while. The moon will reappear, okay? It'll come back. Just like our sky dome, our, um, our ice dome will also come back once the uh, change is finished, right? Once, basically, it's a pole shift for those of you... Um, who are more familiar with that terminology. Once the poles shift and it's, and it's all done and it's done shifting, electromagnetism comes back on and that um, confinement dome of magnetism once again repels the plasma and once again creates water and once again freezes over, giving us back the roof to our world, basically. And that's going to happen with the other ones as well. So it's not like it's going to just you know, blow up and disappear and never come back or whatnot. No, another one will appear in its place. Just like in Doctor Who. I don't know how many Doctor Who fans there are out there, but um, the moon has been a prominent character in Doctor Who. And there was a specific episode where they showed the moon. I thought I had a, I thought I had a actually, let me see if I have a picture of it. But basically what happens is um, the moon breaks open like an egg in Doctor Who, which is not just located one second um let's see where would it be here there we go sorry just one quick second here 
It should be in the moon one, I believe. That's where I just had it, though. You know what? I pro it's probably been playing this whole time. All right, where is it? Moon. Man, I have so much stuff. Like, it's starting to become more difficult to find my own research. M for moon, J. J L M M. It should be right here. The moon. Where's the moon stuff? Oh, you know what? It's under plasma. Okay, sorry. Plasma. Then we go to the moon. There it is. Moon breaking. Okay. Um. Okay, so I, I actually don't see it right here for some reason. But I guess you'll suppose I guess you'll have to just look that one up for yourself. There's some really cool um gifts out there and stuff, or you can just watch the Doctor Who episode. I'm sure you can find it. But what happens is um, the moon breaks apart in Doctor Who and then it reforms and makes another egg. They call it an egg. And that's actually how a lot of the tribal people of various places, the ancient tribal people, referred to the moon as an egg. Now, let me stop this right here. I want to show you this particular picture. Now, this one is of interest to me because not only does it have a broken moon, but it's got this Cthulhu type character. And like I've said in many videos, Cthulhu represents the plasma tentacles that come down. There's plasma, uh, plasmic spirals is what they are. And that's why you're going to see, this isn't, I'm not going to go into the, the plasma tentacles right now. I'm going to do that in another time, but it's just interesting to me that they included this type of stuff. A lot of times you can see the various symbolism that's grouped together with these images. That's why you have this right here. That's not, that's not how it really looks. It's a cartoonification of it. It's a caricature of of a of a naturally occurring phenomenon, for a lack of better words. Okay, um, but it's just the plasma tentacle tentacles, uh, the plasma tubes that exist in our plasma sphere, entering into our world and basically coming down like huge fingers, trying to ground themselves to our world. But I did want to make that point clear about the moon breaking because. Ours is going to break too. So our the people who live on our sister world will look up in their sky and they will see our moon or our dome breaking apart as well. All these things, I believe, are going to be happening around the same time um, throughout the quote-unquote local galaxy, we'll say. Oh, I'm just going to use the word galaxy for now. I'm going to break down the word galaxy in another video and we're going to talk about some really seriously mind-blowing concepts about what exactly this galaxy or even more so universe or multiverse really is. Um, so keep your eyes out for that. We're going to watch that another time. Let's go ahead and get rid of the window capture there. All right. Now, last but not least, and like I said, I, I am looking forward to hearing all of your stories in the comments and in the chat room as we're watching and uh, watching this live. So, um, the walls of Jericho, okay, is a biblical story where the people of Israel, they were told by God to go around the walls, these huge, huge walls, to walk around these walls, I believe it was seven times, and then on the seventh time, they were to blow their mighty horns called shofars, their trumpets, for lack of better words. Now, when these trumpets of God were blown, the walls of Jericho came down. That is us, okay? Um, that's us today, but that's us a while back as well. That is our world. That is, that is many worlds. So, you know, that's just one example I wanted to throw out there. Now, if you all have other examples that I haven't listed today, make sure you share the information, uh, whether it be an example from a movie or fiction or fantasy. Comic books um, actually have quite an immense amount of truth I have found to them. And I was never a comic book reader. You know, I was never really into reading comic books. I, I thought they were cool to look at, you know, I, but I didn't want to read the actual comics, you know? Well, I have been uh, reading some comics lately just because the truth is hidden inside of what they call the untruths which are fantasy and fiction and stories and myths and legends. There's for me there's more truth in things like that, things like those than there is in the seven o'clock news on TV, which I don't ever watch anyway. So I wanted to share this with you. I'm looking forward to all of your comments on what you believe it is. Um, 
Check out the, the video one more time, you know, if you want to check it out many times, listen to the sounds. You don't have to just watch my video where I'm showing you the sounds. Hey, Laura A just subscribed. So welcome Laura A. Um, but yeah, I highly encourage you to go listen to all these sounds for yourself and listen to it and compare it to the sounds that glaciers make or the sounds that icebergs make or the sounds. And I'm not talking about icebergs, you know, when they crash into the water and stuff, I'm just talking about ice itself it uh it moves and it resonates and our ice dome above us is moving and it is probably thinning i'm i'm totally assuming on you know well everything really i'm just assuming um i'm speculating and it's speculation that is based on my gut and my intuition and my knowledge and it is a balance between my mind my brain my research and my intuition and my connection with uh what's out there we'll say but anyhow yeah, let me know what your thoughts are on the subject. Um, I'm going to be talking about some really interesting things that are coming up, but I got a lot to st I, I've got a lot of stuff to to put together. Uh, we're going to be talking about many things, including uh, I guess I'll share some things with you guys now since you watched the whole video. Uh, we're going to be talking about and keep your eyes out because you know if you've seen this video in the future, then the videos I'm about to talk about are probably already available. So go check them out on my playlist. Um, but I'm going to be talking about what I call, and I, I don't know if other people have named it this as well, or perhaps there's other names. I call it the fractal verse. So what is the fractal verse? I'm going to get into that. Um, but in short, it's a combination of the macro verse, the big universe and the microverse, the little universe. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about something very interesting to me, which is something called space whales. Now, I don't want to talk in any more about that because it's going to be a very fun and interesting video, but look for the space whale video to come up. That's going to be fun too. Uh, let's see. Do I have anything else? Oh, and humunculi. We're going to be, we're going to be talking about humunculi, eating brains, zombies, uh, the fractal verse space whales. It's going to be a good time. Anyhow, thank you all so much for watching. Um, I'm sorry that I'm not doing a live stream right now, but like I said, it'll be, uh, you know, about two and a half more months and then we'll probably start doing some more live stream right now. I'm giving this a try and we're going to go ahead and, uh, premiere all of my videos so that I can just work on them and then I can engage with the chat as we're all actually watching the videos. So I want to say thank you. Welcome to all of the new members of my channel. I'm honored. I'm humbled and I am excited to continue doing what I love to do. It's, it's, it's my passion. I love talking about these things and just sharing my path my perspective, my philosophy, my walk, my ideas with all of you wonderful people out there. And I really appreciate all of the uh, positive feedback that my channel has had this year alone. It started off a little rough, but things are smoothing out as we go. Thank you mods, by the way, the mods are playing a huge part because whenever I premiere these videos right now, um, I believe premieres just kind of have to be open to the public in the chat. So I just want to say thank you to all of my mods. Let's give the mods a round of applause for keeping it clean and keeping it positive. Really. Um, that's what I'm focusing on. So if you have a question about it, uh, mods will chat about, you know, we'll talk about the, what I expect in the chat room, uh, which isn't too much, but just basically the golden rule, keep it positive, right? Good vibes. That's golden rule. So with that being said, good vibes to all of you. Um, I'm excited to premiere the video. I can't wait. Um, it's been, it's so much fun studying and I'm going to go. So good vibes and goodbye.